thought for the day, brothers and sisters. Today is reading in the book of Psalms, Psalms chapter 6, where we have David speaking about how he wanted God not to look at him in wrath and anger and, you know, discontent with him. And then in verse 6 of Psalm 6, David speaks about how he spent the whole night crying out to God on his bed. He had what we would call, I guess, insomnia that night. And yet he spent his time with the Lord. And this hit me personally because recently, not too long ago, I had an all-nighter, so to speak, where I was up all night because of something called acid reflux. Sometimes I eat foods that I shouldn't eat. Um, I know better. And as the old saying goes, you play, you pay. And I spent the whole night up. But I can remember when this happened recently, spending time with God. Even though I wasn't able to get to sleep because of the discomfort in my stomach, I closed my eyes, I meditated on the Lord, prayed, and you fa I found peace. I, I found peace in the middle of the night that I know the temptation would be to put on TV, to look at comedy shows or look at my phone. No, I just wanted to rest my eyes, rest my mind, rest my heart. Proverbs chapter 4 verse 23 tells us to guard your heart for from it come the issues of life. Proverbs chapter 23 verse 7 tells us as a man thinks in his heart, so he is. My friends, it's not the crises that come in our lives. It's how we deal with them. David went to the Lord a couple of chapters early in Psalm chapter 4 verse 3. We, we are told that he called on the Lord. There are some scripture verses I encourage you to look at. Psalm 46 verse 1, Isaiah chapter 41 verse 10, and Nahum, Nahum minor prophet chapter 1 verse 7. When you get a chance, look at those scripture verses. They basically speak about how God is our strength, our help in time of need. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ, when he was in the greatest time of need in his life on the cross, suffering so much agony for our sins, we are told that in Luke chapter 23, verse 46, he cried out, Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. You see, when Christ was in his desperate need of trouble in his whole life on earth, although he was God in the flesh, he was man. And he is our representative. He is our, the one we are to imitate in our lives, as Ephesians chapter 5, verse 1 tells us. He cried out to God, his Father, to set us an example as 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 21 tells us, he set us an example for when we're suffering in life, how to deal with it. When we deal with situations in our lives, my friends, how do we deal with it? Because life is going to hit us. David is experiencing this in Psalm 6. David is a man after God's own heart, we're told in 1 Samuel chapter 13, verse 14. But he went through many trials and tribulations in his life. Some of them because of consequences of his actions. Ultimately, everything was according to God's will. Ephesians chapter 1 verse 11 tells us God is working everything out according to his own will. And sometimes even what man intends for evil, as David learned, I mean, as Joseph learned in his life in Genesis chapter 50 verse 20, God works out for our good. But the Christian life, my friends, is not a sprint, but a marathon. What I mean by that is when I was younger, I used to do some martial arts and boxing, and I would have a trainer have me run. Sometimes I would do sprints, like a 100-yard dash, to build up speed in my legs so you'd be able to move in and out of trouble when you were in the ring fighting somebody. Oftentimes, he would have me jog more like a marathon, say like five, eight miles to in develop endurance to keep going on but that's how the christian life is my friends the christian life is not a sprint it's a it's a marathon our lord and savior jesus christ said in matthew chapter 24 verses 12 and 13 that in the last days which were rapidly approaching more and more as time goes on perilous times will be coming wickedness is going to abound he said and the love of many is going to get colder and colder but he said, he who endures to the end shall be saved. In the Old Testament, there was a city called Nineveh. And God sent two prophets there, one by the name of Jonah, who reluctantly didn't want to go there, but went. And there was repentance in the city. About 100 years later, God sent another prophet by the name of Nahum. Nahum 
was told the same thing to preach to these people, but there was no repentance. They lived in their rebellion. You see, they started off well, but they ended bad. This is how we need to be careful, my brothers and sisters, in our Christian walk. God saved us, and we're thankful that, as Philippians chapter 1, verse 6 tells us, he who began the good work will be faithful to complete it. I am thankful for scripture verses in my own personal life, like 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 13, where it says, even when I am faithless, God remains faithful. But that is not an excuse to trample on the grace of God. The Christian life is a life of discipline from beginning to end, spiritually speaking, from the womb to the tomb. We are to continue on in our walk with the Lord, enduring to the end. Difficult times are going to come. As we're going through the Psalms, we're seeing a man like David who penned a lot of the Psalms under the inspiration of the Holy Spirit, crying out to God in his time of need. For many, many centuries, Christians, godly men and women throughout the centuries have looked to the Psalms for comfort, for strength. Because if we're honest with ourselves, life does hurt at times. Life hurts oftentimes. We're told in Acts chapter 14, verse 22, with many trials and tribulations, we must enter the kingdom of God. And 2 Timothy chapter 2, verse 3 tells us, endure, good, endure hardship as good soldiers in Christ Jesus. Our Lord and Savior Jesus Christ is our example, my friends. You look at his life here on earth. It wasn't peaches and cream with a little sugar on top, with a little cherry on top. Now, the life of Christ was a life of grief and sorrows many times, a life of struggle. But through it all, he trusted in his Father. All Christ wanted to do on this earth was be obedient to his Father, obey the word of his Father. And we too should be the same way. Whether times are good, or when times are really, really hard. As I said before, Psalm 6, verse 6, David wept all night on his bed, but yet he stayed faithful to his father, to the God that he loved, despite his sins, despite the many times he fell. Deep in his heart, he had a heart for God. May that be the same for us today, despite the outward circumstances we're going through. May we guard our hearts. May we guard our minds. Protect our souls. Only through Christ can we do this, as we're led, directed, and taught in life by the Holy Spirit. Heavenly Father, Lord God, I thank you for all my brothers and sisters in Christ who will see this devotional video today, Lord. I pray that we would have a hunger, a hunger for your word today, to read your word, to pray your word, meditate on your word, be obedient to your word, the Bible. May you place on the hearts of many brothers and sisters who will see this devotional video today, a passage of scripture, maybe even a verse they can meditate on, to chew on and digest. Father God, feed them the living word of you, O Lord God. I ask this in Jesus Christ, our Lord and Savior's name. God bless you all today, my friends.